Hello, my name is Eliza. Welcome to my video. I haven't made a video in a very long time, probably like this time last year. Um, because mainly because I just now I just like making videos of the van and I'm a bit of a perfectionist so I didn't want to make any more videos of it until it was finished um, and it's still not finished but now it's mostly finished and the reason for that is because we finally 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 painted it um, on the weekend just gone which is actually why I'm here making this video because we decided to paint the van ages ago when I say wait uh, it's my dad and I we work on the van together and we decided that we were going to paint the van um, and obviously did a lot of research and there weren't that many videos. We were going to use Raptor paint and there weren't that many videos um, start to finish of someone painting a van, specifically a van with Raptor paint, um, especially not in Australia. There were quite a few um, in the US, but we sort of wanted to just see an Australian video. I don't know why, it doesn't really make a difference. But anyway, here I am making this video. So I filmed the entire process. We did a bunch of rust repair, primed all the rust spots and everything, and then prepared the van and then actually painted the van. So it's in that order. And obviously we also bought the paint. So we went with Raptor paint, um, which is by Upol, I think is the brand. Um, I was going to just talk about Raptor paint myself, but I don't trust myself to say everything right. So I actually got the website up. So the whole thing with Raptor paint is that it's kind of made for DIYs. It's made for four wheel drives or ute trays and all that. And obviously it can go on vans too. So it's supposed to, the main thing for us was that it's way, way, way thicker than a standard um, auto paint and it's chip resistant. So it's kind of like energy absorbing, which is the reason why it doesn't have a completely gloss, shiny finish. It's got that sort of textured finish. So any stones flicking up off the road or anything, it's actually resistant from them, which just made sense for me to use it because obviously this van is going to be driving one day around Australia. So it just made sense. It also works as rust protection, which any auto paint does, but um, just because of how thick and durable it was and with the amount of rust, it wasn't a lot of rust, but just with the amount of sort of little patches of rust that we were fixing up, it just made sense to be using this one. So I have spliced together all of my footage in a video here and I thought I will just play through that and explain what's happening. Also, it's currently quarter past eight, so it's gonna start getting dark. So I'm gonna try and talk really quickly before it's actually dark. So one of the very first things that we did was buy the actual paint. Um, if you are in Melbourne or Victoria, I 100%, 1000% recommend going to Seaford Body Shop Paint Supplies. They were awesome. I'm pretty sure the guy who served us name was Greg. I hope that's correct. Um, he was great. He knew his stuff. He was a really nice guy. He gave us a lot of tips as well. He was really helpful. Yeah, so we went to Seaford Body Shop Paint Supplies and the store was awesome and they had a lot of staff there who were all really nice and friendly and they had a really big Raptor range. So everything that we needed was there and more. Um, they also had this giant red wall which was painted with Raptor paint which was just kind of cool to see because I'd never actually seen the paint in the flesh. Um, now because Raptor paint comes up textured, not smooth like a gloss, it actually, you can choose different textures which I didn't actually know until we got there. So they had like a little card set of all the different textures that you could end up with. So that's this one here. I tried to take a video of it, I don't know what happened to my video, I think I filmed it as a time lapse so it's a bit glitchy but you can kind of get the gist. They've got these little cards with all the different textures on it. So I think we went with either the middle black or the orange texture was one of the finest ones, which is what we wanted. We wanted a little bit of texture, but not super gritty. So that's what we went with. And it doesn't change anything about the actual paint. It's just the setting that you set the spray gun to because we bought a specific um, Raptor spray gun as well. So I had to choose my color and there were like five million blues to choose from, but I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted in my head. And it was the same thing with the white, but I just went with the standard body paint that was already on the van just to make it a bit easier. Uh, and this is the blue that I ended up going with, which I was super stoked with. And this is everything that we ended up buying. So from the Seaford Body Paint Shop, we bought two boxes of Raptor paint. In each box, there are four bottles of paint one tin of hardener, which you have to mix into the paint, and one measuring cup. So we had eight bottles for the whole van. We only ended up using six and a half. Uh, yeah, no, no, sorry, seven. No, yeah, six and a half, because we had one and a half bottles left. Obviously the half bottle is useless because it hardens. 
Um, but yeah, so we bought those two boxes and then we had to buy the colours to mix into the paint. So I got one tin of my blue and one tin of my white. And finally we got a spray can of this adhesive stuff, which we just had to spray on any um, van parts that weren't the actual van body just so that the paint still actually stuck to it i think it would have without the spray but just to make it an extra sturdy grip we did that as well so one of the very first things that we did to prepare for painting the van was the rust repair which is the part of the whole reason we decided to paint the van because before we did any rust repair there wasn't really anything too serious wrong with the actual paint job um but to fix most of the rust well to fix all of the rust we had to strip it right back um most of it right back to the metal some of it not all the way back but we had to get a layer of paint off anyway so it made sense to just do the whole thing to me because we were doing it in so many different spots on the van so one of the first spots that we had to fix up was the actual guttering of the van which you can see here that's where the roof racks, roof racks clip onto um, so I just went at all that grit with a wire brush and then on the more serious rust spots I got into it with this wire brush drill bit that just clips into the drill and that strips the top layer of paint right off. So that's the guttering covered with um, rust converter just to try and give it a bit more of a better job and all those little spots there were just other spots of rust on the boot and the big red patch at the top was actually a bit of filler that we had, well my dad had put on to fill in a dint. Um, that was just in the body that we couldn't get from this side because behind there is more interior metal stuff so we couldn't actually fix the dent so we just filled it over because it seemed like the best solution <laughs> so then we just taped around the guttering of the roof racks so that we could prime spray it without the gray spray going everywhere um, and this is the primer that we used it was I think from Repco so it's a proper auto primer um, for vehicles and then there was also a lot of rust around the windscreen. So this is us trying to figure out how to take the windscreen out. And we pretty quickly accepted defeat and realized that we were gonna have to get someone to come. So we got this guy from National Windscreens, I think they're called, um, and he was awesome. He just came in and got it out. The Toyota Hiace Commuter 2004 model, which is what I have, and I'm sure this applies to other models, but I don't know for 2005 onward. Um, doesn't have any adhesive in the windscreen uh the rubber that holds it into place it's just kind of on there i don't really get how it stays in but it's like the shape of the actual rubber and the shape of the van keeps it all held into place so he used this special little tool thing um and then just pushed it out with his boot purely from my experience what i would say is if you can see a little bit of rust creeping out from below your windscreen I would recommend just forking out the money to have it taken out and suss out where your rust is at because we had quite a bit that we sort of had to fix up and I've heard stories of people who have had rust under their windscreens and ended up with water dripping through while they're driving and all that I mean obviously if it's a little bit of surface rust and you don't have the van forever then it's fine but we had one bit that was pretty serious so if you can see that it's there on all the models that don't have adhesive, I don't know if the newer models have adhesive or not, but on all the older models that don't have adhesive, you can just sort of slip a little, I don't know, like a um, chisel or a screwdriver, even a flathead screwdriver up there and flick the rubber up and then you can look underneath and see if there's much rust there. Because the guttering, for anyone who doesn't have a high S, this is just going to be a load of twaddle, feel free to skip forward, but because the guttering comes along and ends right at the windscreen and it curves right down where the windscreen is all the water that runs off there runs straight down to the windscreen and because there's no adhesive it gets under there and just stays there and so ours was full of grit and slime and just grossness um, and that's what causes the rust so now that we've had it replaced we're actually going to put a layer of adhesive the guy gave us this proper windscreen adhesive just to try and stop the water from getting under there to avoid any rust in the future um but yeah that's my little rant about windscreen rust if you can see that it's there it might be worth fixing um but if it is exposed like if you're fixing anything that's actually coming out from underneath the rubber then you're gonna have to paint it which just makes it a whole bigger thing but if you're doing it just under where the rubber is then it doesn't matter you just prime it or whatever i don't know if that's right maybe google it because I'm not an expert. <laughs> anyway, back to the video. 
So this is all the rust that we had around the windscreen. This was not as bad as I thought it was. It went all across the bottom and all up the side. But once I actually started scrubbing it, I realized that most of that was just random grit, um, not actual rust, which is a bit of a relief to see all that whiteness coming through as I scrubbed it off. So I just went at that with the wire brush and then wiped it off with a cloth. Um, the main problem spot was up the top of the windscreen. You can see here, there was this one bit where it was just completely decayed. There was an actual hole in the body. So um, I got to the whole windscreen again with the wire brush drill bit um, on the drill to strip it all back as far as I could um, before we primed it and before the guys were coming back the next day to put the new windscreen in. So I had a day and a half to get the windscreen area completely ready for the glass to go back in. Um, and I think I filmed a little video here from when I was actually working on it. This is really awkward to film, but this vinyl lining on the roof actually comes right to here and folds over this edge. And there seems to be like this adhesive along here. Um, I've managed to peel one end off and it's like quite rusty through there and I don't know if I can get this on the camera but quite a bit of rust in there so I'm probably gonna get this whole strip off and just try to work under there and then we have this <laughs> um, so there's quite a bit of what do you call that like decay through there so I'm just gonna do as much as I can with the wire brush um, just to try and sort of file it all away and see how much we actually need to chip out of there and then we'll just fill it with some sort of body filler prime it obviously do some rust converter on it and see how it goes yep so i just scrubbed some of the adhesive off with that wire brush to strip it off a little bit and then started hacking away at that big rust chunk with the wire drill bit brush and then once the whole thing was finished we just sprayed it all with primer got it ready for the new glass to come back in and we fixed that big chunk up perfectly with a bit of body filler um, as well so that was all that we had to do for the rust repair that obviously wasn't all of it there was bits sort of all over the van um, where little bits of stone had chipped the paint away or anything um, anything that was just surface level was fine to just sand off like I did a lot of hand sanding around the van and then anything a bit deeper we just had to strip the paint away until the it got to the bare metal to make sure the rust hadn't gone that deep and where it hadn't we just primed it and where it had if it was chipping away which I think was only on one spot of the guttering and then in that spot on the windscreen um, we just stripped it right off and then filled it with body filler because none of it was that big it's really starting to get dark now hey that's right I'll just like adjust the exposure if this here maybe I'll do a little is that better yep <laughs> So the next thing was to start masking the van to get ready for painting, which was super exciting. It was a tedious job, but worth every second. Um, as any video about painting a vehicle will say, it's all in the preparation, and it so was. We've been preparing for this for ages, like just doing little jobs around the van, getting ready. But in terms of the two whole days that we spent um, on the job, so it was Saturday for like 12 hours from 9 till 9, and then Sunday from 9 till like 6, 90% um, of that time was preparation. The, the actual painting took a tiny fraction of that time. Um, and a decent portion of that was masking, as you will see. So we started by masking all the little details on the van that weren't going to be painted. We masked around the edge of the windows, um, like the really accurate mask, to make sure that that would be a really nice, clean finish and then we put the plastic up on the windows um, i read someone saying to never use newspaper because the paint will just go straight through it or like you know make the newspaper go all funky which makes total sense so we bought the proper masking plastic um, and stuck that around all the windows and then for the windscreen another thing that i'll just quickly add because the rubbering obviously goes right down to the edge of the body when you use the paint and I actually had this happen on one point on the van. When you use the paint, if you go to peel the tape away um, and it, there's sort of a gap, like obviously if I taped down 
to the edge of the masking tape and then paint it over it. It sort of would have created a sheet over the edge of the tape and the body. So when you peel it away, it kind of messes up the paint a little bit just around the details like that. So for the windscreen, what we did once again on the highest, cause you don't have adhesive, we put um, a cord of really small rope under it. And what you can see here, that's us sliding it under. So we just use like a paint stirrer thing to get it under and you can see it creates that little gap just so I could mask to the edge of the adhesive and then not worry about the paint sticking to the actual tape and tearing when I took the masking off. So I did that around the whole windscreen. It didn't actually fit in up the top of the cord, but um, I did that all around the two sides and the bottom. And here is the whole van mask. Well, no, not the whole van, a portion of the van masked up, ready to go. So next up was even more preparation, which was particularly the sanding and then the final masking that we had to do before starting the painting. So I just went at the body of the van with the orbital sander, obviously wearing a mask because it creates so, so much dust. Um, and I could only do that on the really flat accessible surfaces. So any of the sort of smaller details, you can see that rim just above the wheel there. Um, I hand sanded just because I didn't want to strip too much paint back. And when you get the orbital sander on a funny angle, it just strips right back to the metal. You can sort of see where that's happened in a few spots there. Um, and then once we'd sanded everywhere that we were painting for the blue, which is what we did first, we started masking to cover up anything that was staying white. So I had to create this very um, accurate line, which was probably the most tedious part of the whole masking process because we had to create the straight line where the blue edge was going to end. Um, so we just used a really long piece of wood to make sure we ruled that line straight and then masked that up with all the tape along the edge there. And then obviously had to do the same thing on the back there um, because the blue ended at the same point all the way around, like at that little ridge point. And then once we'd done the proper uh, clean line, we were just able to mask straight over that with another layer of tape um, and the paper to stop the paint from going up into the section that was staying white. So we just rolled that paper out around both of the sides, the back, and then across the front here um, where the headlights were. This was actually before we decided to paint that whole section blue as well. We were originally going to leave that all black. And then we just masked over the wheels with a layer of the masking plastic. We didn't mask the actual wheel wells, just the wheels, because we weren't too worried about that. And this is what the whole van looked like, masked up, ready to paint. So we didn't actually mask the whole thing because the Raptor paint doesn't have too much spray, like floaty whateverness. Um, it just sprays where it needs to go. It has a little bit of overspray, but it wasn't too bad. So we just masked one roll of paper and that was kind of enough for that. So then we had to get the space ready to paint um, so that I wasn't going to wreck the driveway. Um, so for that, I just had to reverse the van out, uh, which was a bit unusual, obviously, with all of this um, impeded vision. But once we got the van out, we covered the whole driveway with one of these giant sheets. And then I had to drive the van back in. And yeah, it was funny. I had to enter the van through the back door because obviously all the side doors were masked up. Um, so yeah, we just put the van back in and then we created this little sort of back wall um, of our <laughs> make do spray booth we just held that up on literally just on some tomato stakes that were staked into the garden and cut some little holes in it just so that it wasn't going to get pulled away by the wind so we hired an air compressor um from kennard's hire Ken kennard's kennard's hire um which we went and picked up we had it hired for 24 hours which was full on because it meant essentially that we had to get the whole thing done in 24 hours I've just turned my phone torch on and put it up so that you can see a bit better. I could turn my lights on, but none of my electrical system is hooked up right now because we had to take the roof rack off, which has the solar panel on it. So um, I have no lights, but this should do for the moment. So yeah, we hired the Kennard's air compressor for 24 hours. Um, very heavy machine, so easy to use though. You literally just switch it on, set your air pressure and go for it. 
So this is us getting the paint ready to mix. So all we had to do was mix the paint, the hardener, and the actual paint colour, and then shake it a lot. Like shake, 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 shake as much as you think you need to, and then some. So once we had that all mixed, we just gave it a little test on a board to make sure we got the texture the way that we wanted it, because obviously the air pressure that you use um, changes the texture with the Raptor paint. <gasps> and then it was time to start painting, which was so exciting. I was so nervous and so scary. So dad, um, dad went first. Um, this is the back right side of the van. Oh, it depends which way you're facing. But yeah, so we just went for it. Um, if you're a panel beater, maybe don't come at me for my spraying technique <laughs> because I'm sure it's not standard. I'm sure it's not up to code, but you know what? It did the job and for a DIY, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so we just made sure to get all the little details spraying in the wheel wells. Um, and there were a lot of little nooks and crannies that you had to like look at on different angles to make sure you hadn't sort of missed any spots of color. So after the first side, we moved right onto the back. You can sort of see as we apply it, you can kind of see the stripes of where it's been applied, but um, that was obviously only the first layer. So we did do two coats. Um, and once that was, once the second coat had been applied, um, obviously from a bit more of a distance, it had a way, way, way smoother finish. So we started on the final side of the van and then that's when this bottle started to run out. So that was the first bottle, got us a coat on one side, the back, and then most of the right side. I think this is where it runs out, yeah. So we mixed up a second bottle, shook it once again a lot. Shake, 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 shake. So much, so much shaking. My arms were probably more sore from the shaking than the spraying. And then we got right back into it. So kept spraying the van. I think this is just a little time lapse of all the spray. So I'll just let you watch and enjoy. <laughs> And that is how the blue was looking. I think this is just after one coat. Um, so it's a little bit patchy, but yeah, it was super exciting by this point. So we actually, after that, we did a second coat, which I didn't film because it's basically just the same thing all over. And then I super last minute decided to paint all of the features on the van. So the bumper on the back, the, I don't know, bumper thing on the front, um, the mirrors, all of the mud guards and everything. Well, we didn't make that choice at that point we just started off deciding to paint the bumper I asked mum for her opinion do you think I should paint it or not she said to leave it but we ended up deciding I'll paint it um, blue and then if I hate it I'll just go over it with a normal paint because it'll have that layer of proper body car body paint and then I'll just go over it with a standard black spray paint but alas we painted it blue and I loved it so, um, as I said before, we had that can of spray stuff for anything that wasn't proper car body. So we used, this is it here. We used that to spray over the um, whole of the bumper just to make it a bit more adhesive and gave it a minute to dry and then just went straight for it, painting it. And as soon as we started doing it, I could tell <laughs> that I loved it. I just think it made it look so much more nicely finished. So right as we started painting the back bumper, it was probably like 6.30 or something, and then PM. And then we realized if we're painting the back bumper, we should paint the front bumper too. Um, and we had like a third of a bottle of paint left and we were kind of like, oh, do we do it, do we not? So we really quick, frantically mastered up, hence why I didn't film it, because we were going hell for leather. Um, so we mastered up around the front and then painted that whole thing blue and we ran out. We, we got the whole thing blue and it had sort of started getting dark and so we couldn't really tell um, if we'd done a good enough job because we were kind of working by torchlight. So we thought we'll just leave it and if we need to tomorrow then we'll just make sure we have enough bottles of paint to do some fix up work on it. So day one was done. We'd painted the whole bottom half, the blue section of the van and we used three bottles. So three of the eight bottles. So we had five bottles left. 
for the white portion of the van which was all of the walls from like here up and obviously the whole roof the front part and the back part so the first thing we did the next day which was one of the most satisfying things was peeling off the masking to get that straight line so um we just i mean it's very self-explanatory we peeled off the tape and i didn't actually get any footage of the masking job that we did um to mask the blue for when we painted the white but it was pretty much just the exact same process um creating that really straight line with the tape and then putting the paper on over it and obviously masking any windows that hadn't been done yet and then once that was all done I just had to start sanding again so I got my mask on and went on the roof with the orbital sander and did as much as I could um which wasn't too hard when you've got this kind of ladder that you can see I'm using it made it so much easier um to be able to reach the roof obviously I didn't have to climb into the structure of the carport which was pleasant and then once we'd sanded the whole van we just went over it with this um wax remover stuff which we'd obviously used everywhere else as well I just hadn't filmed it yet um and then oh no I did film some I did film some masking <laughs> I'm so disorganized I don't even know what I videoed it was such a full-on weekend anyway here's us masking the back window um as you can see just putting up a bit of paper on there and then obviously because we decided to paint the bumper and the back and front bumper blue um we decided that we should make all the other accessories blue too so that was some of the vents that go over the windows and then um the mud guards as well so we just lay them all out to clean and degrease so that they were ready to be painted and then it was time to start with the white so we just mixed the white spray bottles and we started with the roof because we have such a massive roof rack with pretty much no exposed roof once it's on we decided that um the roof was going to need the least amount of paint um, so we just started with that one and then moved on to the side so that we could make sure all of the exposed parts of the van were really thoroughly covered. So after the roof, we sprayed the front of the van, as you can see here, and then we moved on to the sides. Most of this stuff is just time-lapse, so I'm just going to let the music play and chime in every now and then <laughs> explaining anything that needs to be explained. And then we had to unmask the masking that we'd put up so that we could mask over the white to do a second coat of blue, if that makes sense. So um, this was obviously very exciting because I was seeing the two coats together for the first time. And this was, by the way, after we'd done a second coat of white paint. And I also decided to paint the little Toyota bit that where the boot opens. Um, for the little handle and the key to the boot so I unmasked that one as well um, and sprayed that with the adhesive spray so that we could get onto that with the blue paint and I didn't get any footage of that either um, because I just was way too focused on the painting um, I didn't remember to film everything but after that was the most exciting part which was unmasking the whole van um, the most rewarding part of the whole thing just seeing it all together I was so excited my phone actually fell so i had my phone on a little tripod filming and it actually fell onto the corner of a brick screen side down and i was already so tired and hungry and a little bit grumpy but i was just so excited to be unmasking it and then i turned around and saw that my phone had landed screen side down on the corner of a brick and i had to chop that bit out of the video because i actually cursed a little bit um but i tell you what it was so worth it that was it for the whole paint job two whole days of crazy 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 hard work that i had never done before dad and i didn't know anything about how to do this and it was done it was such a relief we returned the air compressor we cleaned everything up and i keep coming out the front to just sit here and stare at my van because i think she's so pretty so i took some before shots and i've taken some after shots too so i'll put them up now so that you can see what it looked like before and what it looks like now in full detail um, and you know what, I'll probably just end the video after that because that's all. Um, if anyone is watching this who wants to paint their van, feel free to ask any questions. I mean, I, by no means am I an expert, but I've just done it so um, I can tell you what I learned from that. Um, but yeah, if, if I think, I can't remember if I said this in the intro or not, 
but if you are looking for a, a sign to raptor paint your van this is it this is your sign because it's so bloody worth it, it depending on the size of your van it might cost you like a thousand dollars but i tell you what it's a lot better than the six to eight thousand dollars i was quoted to have this professionally done that's all um thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it i know it was a bit of a long one but i just thought i wanted to get this out there for anyone who was in my position eight months ago wanting to paint the van and having no idea where to start um have a lovely day i hope that where and whenever you're watching this from you're not in a covid pandemic lockdown sending you happy and healthy vibes wherever you are and from me and my lovely beautiful pretty freshly painted hattie the highest goodbye i'm back one more thing this is the mind map that my dad made of everything that we had to consider with painting the van so i'll take a photo of it and maybe i'll like upload it to a google drive or something and put the link to that in the description so that if you're planning on painting your van you can see what our thought process and planning process was okay bye